Hi, in this video, I'm going to give you some tips on the goodness of fit. Suppose that we have two or more models that are used to fit our measurement data points. So, how do we decide which of these models give the best approximation to the points? For example, presume that we have two models. The first one is the quadratic curve and the other one is a straight line. Also, the parameters of best fit for both models have been calculated and their plots are depicted as follows. Intuitively, the closer the measurement points to the curve, the better the quality of the fit. After fitting a curve to the measurement data points, firstly, the optimum parameters P0 that give the best fit have been calculated. Secondly, the measurement errors are accurately estimated. Lastly, the corresponding minimum chi-squared value is also calculated. Here, the chi-squared is defined as follows. Imagine if we repeat the same experiments for many times. Of course, we will get the different sets of experimental data. Thus, the experimental data points X and Y will fluctuate due to the random error. The corresponding values of chi-squared obtained from all of these repeated experiments will fluctuate too. These chi-squared values are distributed according to the chi-squared distribution. Suppose that a good curve model, f of x, is used to approximate the data points. Then, 90% of the repeated experiments will produce a chi-squared value that fluctuates between the critical chi-squared values, which are the chi-squared mean and the chi-squared max. Therefore, if the calculated chi-squared lies within the chi-squared mean and the chi-squared max, then the curve is a good fit. On the other hand, if the calculated chi-squared lies outside of the chi-squared mean and the chi-squared max, then the curve is not a good fit. So now, how do we determine the critical values of chi-squared? Mathematically, the area under the probability density curve between chi-squared min and chi-squared max is equal to 0 0.9. And that is 90% of the total area under the probability density curve. These critical values can be easily obtained using the Excel function chi-squared inverse. Now, let's consider the earlier example where we are about to determine which model gives a better fit to the measurement data. Firstly, let's analyze model 1. Using the given data points shown in the table, the expected values predicted by the model are calculated. And then, the corresponding values of the squared weighted difference between the measured value and the expected value are calculated. Finally, the chi-squared value is given by the sum of these squared weighted differences. Here, the chi-squared value produced by model 1 is 6266.6. .6. Note that the degree of freedom is equals to 2, then the value of chi-squared min equals to 0 0.103 and the value of chi-squared max equals to 5.991. Therefore, the calculated value of chi-squared lies outside of the range between the critical values. So, 
we conclude that model 1 is not a good fit. We repeat the same chi-squared calculation procedure for model 2. In this case, the chi-squared value produced by model 2 is given by 96,749. Here, the degree of freedom is equal to 3. Then, the value of chi-squared min is equal to 0 0.351 and the value of chi-squared max is equal to 7.815. Therefore, the calculated value of chi-squared lies outside of the range between the critical values. So, we conclude that model 2 is not a good fit. From here, we found that model 1 fits better than model 2. Since the chi squared of model 1 is smaller than the chi squared of model 2. However, the chi squared value of both models are way too far from the probable range of chi squared. Therefore, both models are not a good fit.